Hey, welcome to the second Halloween variety pack. Now, of course, these aren't all the Halloween games out there, but it's enough so that you don't go home and regret with how little candy you got. Now, this is where I was going to say, let's get started. But in the last episode, I said I was going to get rid of the intro since it was feeling redundant. And the reaction to that honestly reminded me of a Jackass episode where they pretend to drive off with a baby carrier left on the roof and watch as everyone freaks out and runs to stop them. So you win. I'm Johnny Knoxville, and welcome to Ross's Game Dungeon. Now the reason I was going to kill the intro is because it's the same thing over and over. If there's an intro, I want something a little different each time. But I'm frequently not ready for that. But if you're artistically inclined, maybe you can make up the difference. Let's see your take on the titles, and hey, maybe I'll use it in a future episode. Here are all the instructions. There's no deadline on any of this. If you're watching this years from now, it should still be valid if the invasion hasn't started yet. Okay, now let's get started. Pop quiz, what's the first Castlevania game on PC? Well, that would be Castlevania in 1990. It got ported to a bunch of platforms. I actually bought a copy of it for the Commodore 64. It was the first game I ever bought. It didn't work, the disc was bad. And because it was an open computer game, there was no such thing as returns. I ended up taking that pretty well, even as a kid, because I was so used to floppy disk games going bad, I thought this was normal an assumed risk. So it was just a general sense of disappointment. So I actually never got to see what you're seeing now. Maybe it was for the best though, since Castlevania is so hard it would have scarred me in a different way. Well that was the first Castlevania, but pop quiz! When was the second Castlevania game on the PC? Well officially, I think that would be Castlevania Lords of Shadow in 2013. That is one hell of a gap! I tried some of that game. It has wonderful art direction, downright lame music compared to the others, and just wasn't really my kind of gameplay. But, in between the Castlevania PC Dark Ages was Haunted Castle 2. Now the original Haunted Castle was an arcade version of Castlevania. So wait, there was a sequel? No, there wasn't. This is a fan-made game by Megami, who made a bunch of different platformers. But who cares? He made a Castlevania game on the PC! Hell froze over! Let's play it! Alright, start. Well, the graphics are a little crude, and it sounds like he just ripped Castlevania music converted into MIDI, but you know what? Beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, it is sort of Castlevania. We already have a problem though, and that is the music isn't stereo, but the sound effects are all on the right side. So you get spared, I don't. But here we are, going through the cemetery. Now of course, none of this is as good as what's on the consoles, but that was the case for the longest time that the PC got the table scraps for platformers. All the meat was on the consoles. They're chipping away at me, but I'm doing okay so far. Okay, that door messed me up. I wasn't careful enough. I may have to redo it if I don't make it. Huh, double shot. That's weird. I don't even have a sub weapon yet. Ah, close jump. Yeah. Damn it. Here's the boss. Can I take him? <laughs> no, I can't. Hmm. Well, let's try again. Same as before. Ah, damn, I forgot about the zombies. That took a lot of health. Ah, this isn't going well. The boss is going to murder me. He does. Yeah, this is Castlevania. Okay, this is my best run so far. If I stay at the edge, I think I can evade him. Yes, horse is down. Just slow and steady. Yeah, got him. Oh, the caves. I'm probably dead now. Starting in the forest? Go down already. Oh good, the holy water. That's probably the most useless sub-weapon I could have right now. This is tricky. Oh, I'm not doing well. Double shot again. The developer has a sense of humor, I see. Into the caves. A whip upgrade. Oh, that's cute. It upgrades my whip in a section where all my enemies are one-hit kills. Damn it. Continue. Man, they're laying it on thick. That was bad. 
I'm in the cave, so I'm a dead man walking. I'm surprised I'm hanging on as long as I am. What the fuck was that? What shot me? The cave shot me. Nice. Okay, slow. Slow. I'm doing it. Yeah. Damn it. What the? Made it. Barely. A rock button. This is testing my will. Oh, come on! What? Why this time? Oh, wow, look at this. I can't make the jump to the right, and it's an open pit to the left. I'm already dead. This is evil. Okay, I'm just getting worse now. Yeah, who cares about the holy water? Nothing matters. I think I'm about Castlevania, guys. Oh, look at that! The bat hit me off screen as I was exiting! Oh, what happened? I lost the whip? Maybe it's invisible by accident? No, I can't hit anything. I lost the freaking whip. I lost my patience too. So yeah, Haunted Castle 2. I think the evidence speaks for itself. I really like Castlevania or games with this kind of theme. It's just too bad I suck at Castlevania. Anyway, it's still nice to- Oh yeah, there's a Haunted Castle 3. Konami. Oh, we get an intro this time. Stepping it up. You know, this art style is both bad and good. I'll take it. And we have the same problem as before. Music in both ears, sound effects in one. Or I have that problem. Now you might think this is more of the same, but it's not. This one is copying Castlevania 2, mixed in with the experience system of later Castlevanias. We have a free roaming world, villages to visit, you can save your game, and the difficulty isn't bananas. It's also not filled with cryptic bullshit, and there's no day or night cycle to interrupt things. Meaning, this could actually be an improvement upon the original. Your sub-weapons aren't really meant to be useful though, it's more like you need them to access certain areas or fight specific bosses. There are also items you simply need to progress but don't help you otherwise. So sure, the production's rough, but a free-roaming Castlevania with some RPG mixed in? Hell yeah, keep it coming! Well, eventually, it stopped coming for me because I got completely stumped. I felt like I explored every area, some I just didn't have the items to pass. Well, someone online posted a playthrough, so I had to see what they did that I didn't. And here it is. Did you miss that? Yeah, you have to press up in this exact spot. So much for not having the cryptic bullshit. You need to do this, too. Knowing that, I got a ways after this, but then I stopped. I honestly can't remember why, but I remember it being a good reason. Probably because it was hard. Anyway, I love the concept of exploring a gothic horror world. Traveling the countryside from village to village. So much so, I'm willing to scrape the bottom of the barrel like this. I can't get enough of this sort of thing. For any Castlevania fans out there, you can give these a try yourself. Or at the very least, this has been educational, seeing the squalor PC gamers have been rolling around in. Alright, that's it for Castlevania. It's nothing but zombies from here on out. If you're a gamer, you've probably at least heard of DayZ. It's a game where you run around on an abandoned island and try to survive. It's also sort of a precursor to the Battle Royale mania that's currently infecting the entire world. Now, myself, I'm not really interested in Battle Royale games. They remind me of the most dangerous game, and that stuff's pretty hardcore for me. Battle Royale games give me flashbacks to those times I was hunted by eccentric millionaires out in the wilderness, and I don't want to return to that. And now that we're turning that experience into a kid's cartoon, uh, well, I didn't predict that one. But back to DayZ, it's also a zombie survival game. Now we're getting somewhere. And there are things I like about these kinds of games. It's the end of the world, it's zombie survival, you get to explore the wilderness, and you get sniped by some guy in a ghillie suit 500 yards away. Oh wait, I think I made a mistake. That last one's not on the list. Oops. See, for me, DayZ is hard enough without also getting shot in the head at random. In fact, there are so many ways to die in DayZ. A friend of mine described it before not as a game, but more of an art house murder experiment. So I want the exploration and zombie survival, but not getting shot in the head at any given moment. I know, I'm picky. So what am I to do? 
Well, lo and behold, somebody made Mini DayZ where you can play DayZ in single player in a browser, except with pixel art graphics. Now you could argue this is a, wait, what's going on here? No longer supported. You know, I'm getting sick of how the industry is using that term. Not supported did it used to mean it doesn't work, it will never work, it cannot work. But apparently enough time has passed since I last played this, that's what it means now. Okay, well, uh, huh. This is a problem for the episode. Damn it, this wasn't the plan at all. Okay, time for plan B. The mobile version still works, so I guess that's what we're gonna have to use. Time to break out an Android emulator. Haven't done this one before. So enjoy the first mobile exclusive game on the show. Here we go. Oh yeah, throw tutorials in my face. Well, this is new. This is weird controlling the game like this. Before it was with mouse and keyboard. While clicking where you want to go is convenient, we may have a problem with that. Oh, come on, I know how to do this. I've played the game. Oh, okay. I guess it is good they tell me this. We need an interact button, because there are no buttons on mobile. The future of gaming, ladies and gentlemen. Well, how am I gonna fight the zombies, then? Ah, come on, I know. Ugh. Infect it ahead. Attack it by moving closer. The fight will proceed automatically. Huh. Okay, that's very different than the browser version. There was nothing automatic about that. Let's see this. Oh, wow, this is terrible. I'm gonna die like this. Yeah, I know. Tactical bacon. All right, time to stop the bleeding. Well, I'll say I'm noticing a few improvements, like the camera zooming and seeing your breath, but I'm seeing some huge problems, too. I'll wait and see if I'm just being premature. Oh, wow, a rifle already? This version is just giving it all away. Aiming happens automatically, huh? I am not used to seeing that outside of an RTS. Mobile gaming. A water pop. This version is giving me everything. Okay, tutorial. Yeah, just give me everything. Why not? Repair this boat. Okay, this is new. Repaired. I'm friendly. No, you're not. Shoot, how do you shoot? Good, thanks for repairing the boat for us. Damn it, I thought I was playing single player. If I wanted this, I would play regular Daisy. Oh, all right, that was just the intro. Would it have killed them to make that optional? Let's start things for real. Okay, where are we? Oh, a map! That is so much more than I used to have. You have no idea, guys, I'll get to that. Okay, a dog wants to kill me. This isn't good. Yeah, all right. This is the mini Daisy I remember. Although these stupid tablet controls are handcuffing me. I'm not gonna survive this. Okay, let me explain how this game used to work. I'm gonna have to poach footage to show you this since I literally can't do this anymore. It used to be when you were running away, you could swing back behind you. This was the only way to survive for any length of time. You could stay just ahead of the zombies and have a decent chance of taking them out. It was still risky, but manageable. Now, everything's automated, so I'm gonna die. This game is automating my life out of existence. I've heard this game described before as DayZ if it was reimagined in the Super Nintendo era. Well, that used to be a fair comparison, except the Super Nintendo possessed an advanced feature the mobile version does not. Buttons. Before, you had buttons for attacking, inventory, swapping weapons, interaction, probably some other stuff I'm forgetting. That gave you an edge. Plus, we also had two axis controllers. One for movement, one for aiming. So it controls more like the PlayStation than the Super Nintendo. But now we have essentially one button and one axis controller. So we've gone from PlayStation controls to Atari. This makes me not want to play the game anymore. I don't know how you're expected to survive now without a lot of dumb luck. But then again, this is DayZ. Maybe that's the idea. Now, I was going to talk about how I found ways to survive. Like, I would never be caught outdoors at night. You could effectively hide in buildings away from the windows and no one would find you. It was kind of boring and you would burn through supplies, but anything else was not worth it. Or hey, remember that map? Well, the original had no map. So here's my map. Behold, my glorious stitched together map of a world that may no longer exist. I'll put this up for download if somebody wants it. 
Well, this was a wash. I got nothing but tricks this time. Oh, and you still need internet to play the single player. So you know how that goes. The moral to this story is it's the 21st century and yet buttons are now an advanced technology. <laughs> Bite Jacker. This is a free Flash game. And I should mention, while Flash is getting shut down for crimes against humanity, you'll still be able to run it in the future, guys. I had a lot of people ask me about that. The only games you won't be able to run are the ones that rely on company servers. That's why I'm kind of a one-track record about that. Now, some Flash games also do that, but that's not Flash's fault specifically. It's kind of like saying Flash was found guilty of a home invasion, but was not guilty of killing the hostages. That was somebody else. Oh, hey, it's the intro. Welcome to Bite Checker, the best source for downloadable and independent games in the universe. I'm Anthony, and the underwear I've got on gives me a plus three to charisma, ladies. I'm going to speed this up since the acting is kind of bad here. The story here is as old as mankind itself. These guys are filming a show, but your friend's a zombie. He burst in on you trying to eat you. You run, but whoops, turns out the entire city is full of zombies. So you've got to shoot them. So there it is. And tell me this intro music doesn't sound like it could be straight out of a 90s arcade cabinet. Let's begin. You choose one of the, uh, I don't know. Okay, my first thought was that these were the developers that just put themselves into the game. But no, they didn't make this. Not from the credits, anyway. Instead, these guys are part of Bite Jacker with a Y. An indie game review show thing, best I can tell. And they have an indie game with themselves starring in it. Huh. You know, when I joked, well, maybe, about how Captain Zap may have been a way to get on the good side of Zap64 magazine, well, it looks like this is the real deal. Somebody made a game, then put the reviewers in it. I imagine the reviewers gave it some publicity in return. Or maybe the reviewers commissioned them? I doubt that one, but I don't know. Anyway, play as Jonathan for the better weapon and Anthony for better color commentary. And here's the game. You just progress to the top, shoot zombies, rescue hostages, and wait on painfully slow searching sequences for health or weapons. Or nothing at all. Bullshit. This sounds simple, and it is. And it's not. They keep throwing more and more zombies at you and all this crap in your way that you have to blast through. Plus, the survivors will straggle and get eaten. It's another one of those games where you always have something to worry about. You can get better weapons, but there are so many zombies that you run out of ammo so fast that they really just help you tread water more than anything else. This is why I said Jonathan has the better weapon. You get more bang for your buck with the shotgun. But Anthony has the wit. More machine, more gun. There's a ton of video game references. Super Meat Boy, Mega Man, Contra, Earthbound. Probably some I don't even know. There's frequently the Mortal Kombat Toasty reference with a lot of different cameos. I don't know who any of these people are. Now you can not know who they are too. The longer you stay alive in this game just doing things, the more you fill up the awesome meter. And I keep forgetting to use it, but for Anthony, he becomes Bit Trip Runner for a few seconds and can kill everything. Now things gradually get harder. Oh good, more zombies. I was getting worried there. But you get small bonuses too, like faster searching and walking. So it's a real work hard, play hard kind of game. Moonwalk bonus. Okay, that's a game changer. Now the game really tried to explain to me how to get out of the Groundhog Day loop. I still don't get it, but this is on me. The game has a whole screen trying to get me to understand it. Otherwise, you keep playing the same 10 levels forever, I think? Well, I broke out of it just by accident. Jason, all right, he's coming up. And it turns out the menus actually mean something, and now I understand how to unlock everything. Basically, it's one giant grind. I have mixed feelings on this because this game is half skill, half grind. And it is a grindy road back to the boss. I'm really noticing how there are more zombies now. You know, there's different things to like about zombie games, and this game hits one of the cornerstones for me, and that's the oh god moments. 
They just start creeping in and I can't kill them fast enough. Meanwhile, there's so much never ending crap in the road, I can't carve out a path in time. I get stuck on the corners, this is just a nightmare. But you know, the good kind. These survivors were foolish to come with me. Oh, I'm going to survive, but yeah, that may be the whole story. Hey you, help me out of here. There's no way, man. You're behind that barricade, you're dead already. All you're doing is asking if I want to come die with you too. Nope. This dodge move is absolutely saving me. I think I would be dead as Anthony by now. It makes me wonder if that's meant as a subtle message by the developers. Oh god, oh god, they're coming! They're still coming! I am definitely feeling the heat. But wouldn't you know it? Look at the time! It's time for Jason! Jason's actually not that bad. I mean, I wouldn't call him a complete joke, but he's very manageable and is almost entirely overshadowed by the zombies, which keep on coming. Ah, I just realized I haven't been using my special move. Now's as good a time as any. I'm sure this is a game reference, but I don't know what it is. Boom! What the fuck? I'm dead? Did I just kill myself? My special move is to summon a giant axe down on my face and die? I guess I was doing myself a favor not using it. Anthony's special is way better. Oh my god, I need more cash for a continue? Ah, oh, I have to start the week over. Well, I guess that's what I'm doing. I'll sum it up and say it consists of more zombies. More zombies. Okay, Jason again. This time we're not gonna screw around. No special moves. Dead. Oh, we got an illustration. Comic unlocked. Oh, a URL. Let's try it out. Oh. Yeah, this is 2010, huh? Well, let's try the Wayback Machine. I'm still amazed something like this exists. They're just backing up the internet. Yeah, we found it. Okay, it's a download. Oh, it's passworded. No skipping ahead. You only get the comics if you beat the boss. Well, we get to see the start again and Mario getting axed in the face. Why didn't we get a cutscene of that? And now part of me wants to keep going, but part of me sees this grind. I don't have to beat levels to get to the boss. I have to unlock them by doing the same actions a hundred times. Well, I'm not feeling too grindy at the moment. I mean, Halloween's coming. I want to make it count. This isn't, I don't know, May. So I'm going to cheap out and grab footage from someone who did complete it. Yeah, look, even he was concerned about the grind boring his audience. That says it all right there. But I love how the boss drops these huge rubies, and I can't get them because the level immediately ends when I kill the boss. Why does it appear to change if it doesn't let you actually change? Oh, jeez. Lots of grinding. You're performing a service, Sir Tap Tap. So let's see the next boss. The Xenomorph. This guy makes it look easy, but he has a twin machine gun too. I still love the concept of these guys going and fighting the friggin' alien queen surrounded by zombies while Jonathan calmly films Anthony here with his back to the action as though he's still doing an interview for the show. And here's our comic, now that I have the password. And the game is making me think I made the right choice, since from here on it's nothing but spotlight gameplay. Oh yeah, everybody loves that. No mercy at all. And our final boss is Freddy Krueger. He trips you out, making you think you died. Weaponizing the HUD against you? Well, our intrepid YouTuber here beats him and we get a pretty great credits roll. They identify every cameo. I still don't know who these people are. We get the full cast, and in our final comic, Jonathan wakes up and blows Anthony away with a shotgun. The end. Well, it's a little too grindy for my taste, but this is a really solid game. Or at least that's how I felt right up until I got sick of the progression and quit. It's one of the better indie games starring indie game show reviewers in what was likely an attempt to get on their indie game show that I've played. And it has a satisfying end. Definitely a treat. And now for the final game. Okay, I saved the best for last. Death Road to Canada. This is a roguelike something. We start off with this kind of happening rockabilly music, but I want to cut it for a moment. I'll explain later. Let's begin. You start off with two characters you create and can customize a bunch about their appearance. 
My first impulse was to ignore this, but then I realized the industry as of late has been training me not to care about how my character looks. Because that gets expensive. A pretty big portion of the entire game economy now depends on you paying money to customize how your character looks. Well, their Jedi mind tricks don't work on me. I have not spent a dime on anything cosmetic in any game. So I've begun accepting more and more whatever the game hands me. That's not to say I don't like the option. I tried to make my character look like Kane in Oblivion, and in Counter-Strike I used skins to make the two sides SWAT versus homies. These shots aren't the best, but one of them sported that look where you wear a beanie so low you're on the absolute brink of being able to see at all. I love the idea of maintaining that look even as the police are on their way to kill you. Yeah, that shouldn't affect your aim. You're not just defending your hood, you're defending your style. Anyway, back to the game, when using the randomizer, I stumbled onto some recognizable characters. I started seeing Paul Tuttle Sr. from the show American Chopper. He's a big guy with a recognizable white handlebar mustache. On the show, besides his chopper building skills, he's known for a sense of wanting to get things done and becoming irritated with people to the point of dysfunction. No, 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 no. This is what, no, because, because said, I don't you know think what? the way you think. I, do I don't that. think. Sounds like a worthy addition to me. Let's give him some traits. Mechanic, that's him. And fierce tempered, yeah, that's him too. And as luck would have it, I stumbled onto somebody else I recognized. He's wearing a derby instead of a top hat, but do we have who I think we do joining us? I'll go. That's right, it's the Phantom of the Office. This is a character from the old college humor videos who really stands out. He's a mysterious burn victim who's expressive to the point of having no filter. You know what I just realized? I haven't been to Taco Bell in exactly a year. One year. Is often crude, but also has a touch of class to him as well. He's also an overt racist, stalker, serial killer, and some sort of immortal being with supernatural powers. So, um, I don't know, you wanna know what happened to Amelia Earhart? What? You! Flying is a man's game! What should we give him? Well, mysterious pass for sure. And for profession, none of these really fit him. We'll go with Surgeon. He knows a lot about anatomy. That should spice up our road trip a little bit. Is $5 even a lot? Uh! Check it. Why don't you check your message? Oh. Yeah, this is going to be a good team. Let's begin. Paul Sr. hears rumors that Canada is a safe place, free of the threat of zombies. With nothing to gain from waiting around Florida, he decides to brave the death road and travel north. Huh, he must have been there for Daytona Bike Week. Decisions will come up and you pick places to go find supplies. We'll head over to Yalmart. This is the core of the game, going from site to site, stripping it down. It looks simple and easy, but it's not. Or rather, it won't be. The longer you linger, the more zombies have a way of just showing up. Once you have enough, you book it out of there. The game loves to add to the tension by taking a few tries to get your car started. Up, up, and away. Remember fun? I remember fun. Man, I miss fun. The biggest problem, or at least my biggest problem, tends to be food. Maybe there's a trick to it, but they really munch it down. It's hard to stay on top of it. Where's my freaking cookies? And don't give me no story, because I already know you ate the ones that he gave to you to give to me. I really love how you can just drift through small towns, cities, campgrounds, whatever. You never know what you're gonna get, and it creates this sense of actually wandering the open road. I love it. Maybe if we just stay put, this whole zombie thing will blow over. Now you can find other survivors, but again, unless there's a trick to it, or you're particularly lucky with food, that's usually signing your own death warrant, because you'll burn through food so fast you're ready to kill each other. Not today. Hey, you know what would be great if we were in a tank right now? You know, the last thing that I expected this morning when I woke up was that I'd be driving a tank today. That's good. That's good. Yeah, memories. You can sometimes trade for things you can use, but on average, you're just gonna be undersupplied. Now, I usually like to play things safe, but you never know what the right decision is going to be sometimes. Paul Sr. makes elaborate plans for the next day. It's not until morning that the group realizes that the plans were completely goofy. Morale drops. That is surprisingly typical of the show. We will probably run out of gas before we get to Canada. Next time we stop, I want to use the car battery to power my game console. No. I need some sort of tank fire here, something to cover me because I'm just getting lit up by these japs. 
it blows my mind how on target this game is. Sometimes you have holdout nights where you just have to fight until morning. And of course you eventually die because this game is brutally difficult unless you stack the deck in your favor somehow. Yep, there he goes. Everyone else is dead. Phantom is all alone now. I could sure go for anything else right now. Yeah, I don't even want to keep going on now. It's just not going to be the same without Paul Sr. driving. <laughs> Let's give this another shot. Driving through Florida, looting the neighborhood, not getting enough sleep. I never liked all the mosquitoes in Florida anyway. Overrun by zombies in a junkyard, everybody dies. Dang it. Okay, again, but this time we'll tweak things a bit. We'll make Phantom a mega buff berserker. Possibly too swole to control. Yeah, that works, what with his wrestling experience and all. Empire! <laughs> Big pile time! Making merry! <laughs> and we'll keep Paul Sr. the same, just make him more paranoid. This time it's going a lot better. It helps that Phantom can now break a cabinet over their faces. Okay, now let's talk about the music. It's mostly this mix of upbeat and quirky tracks, and I feel like it undercuts the game's strength. See, this game gets very goofy. You can find oddities all over the place and even recruit a dog, which can fire a shotgun and drive a car. Thanks, Zombie Obama. I think that's all great. The problem is, this is also one of the best zombie games I've played. It's fresh each time, it feels like a struggle, you move from town to town, the more skilled you are, the more you have to work with. If you cut the music, this starts getting intense. Uh oh, it's getting dark, they come out at dark. We're looting the place, but it's closed. They're coming, they're coming! It's a really atmospheric game. The gameplay gets brutal, but very approachable, and you always feel like you have a chance. I think the music really takes away from that. The problem isn't that they made a goofy game. It's that the game itself is too good. Back to the trip, we're not getting enough sleep since every place seems unsafe or somebody has to keep watch. And I got too paranoid about food and neglected to get enough gas, so whoops, no more gas. We're hoofing it on foot now. And that's bad because Phantom accidentally loses some of our supplies. And then there's a zombie ambush. Paul Sr. gets injured. But we find a beat up hybrid. Still have a chance. We pull into town, but the rain is making them crazy. I risk getting more supplies. Hanging in there. Ooh. Okay, one house down. Let's check out the Bark store. No, no, not doing it. We'll never make it out again. Time to cut our losses and go. Made it. Uh-oh, another siege. We've got to hold out. I can't even get to the cabin door. We're dead. I don't even have time to switch to my gun. Come on, come on. Dang it. Well, we got farther, but I honestly don't know what it takes to beat this game. Well, that's not quite true. I should say, I don't know what it takes everyone else to beat this game. I did find a trainer for an older version of the game. You know, Phantom's supposed to be an immortal being, and Paul Sr., well, he works out a lot. So how about we walk the walk with infinite health? Yeah, let's see how this goes. Ding a ling a ling, make way for me and Mr. Linkalin. Well, it starts off well enough. We're invincible. There's no stopping us now. Except just basic driving and encounters still leaves us strapped for supplies. I'm still having to tell recruits to get lost because we just don't have the food. And I'm still playing it as safe as I can. If you don't, you can still die just from a choice in an encounter. It just keeps getting dicier though. I almost lose Paul Sr. in the sewers just because the mob is so thick, we can't even move. And before you know it, bam, we run out of gas and are back on foot again. This sucks. Good thing we're almost out of food too. Our morale is terrible. We get lucky though and find a van, some more food, but bloop, out of gas again. Morale is mutinous. I'm afraid I'm gonna be late tomorrow. A general malaise seems to have come over me. We scrape by though. Again, find another car, find more food. So much food, I'm willing to risk letting some weirdo join our group now. He ends up literally crapping his pants then runs away. That was a good investment. We stop by a trading post. You want 25 units of gas for two cans of food? Are you freaking kidding me? 
This guy is selling anime to keep civilization together, one sale at a time. Nope. And, uh-oh, it's siege time. I can't hold them back. We just don't have the numbers or the weapons. So despite being completely invincible, I can't get past this. I get mobbed so hard I can't even move. Even if I were to escape, I would have to leave Paul Sr. behind. Not gonna happen. So I can't even beat this game on God mode. Let's try it one more time. Similar situation. Starts off well, ends up with me getting inescapably mobbed in a Walmart in South Carolina. Every day is Black Friday when it's the zombie apocalypse. So what now? Well, not being easily deterred, I backed up my save game from a while back where I actually did make it to the end level. So let's boot up the past, the final siege. And here it is. We ended up holding out surprisingly well. I think I could have even done this without cheats, but the thing is, I would never have been this well supplied unless I had cheated earlier. So it's a catch-22. You need cheats to not cheat. A very long five minutes later, we escape. Onward to Canada. Oh, but there's one last dash to the finish line. Let's go. We're doing it! We're making it to Canada! Oh god. Detour! Come on, we can do this! Canada, here it is! Come on, Mounties, what are you doing there? We have to hold them ourselves. They're only giving us two Mounties and a moose. Chainsaw! Ah! Boom! It's Mega Mecha Mountie. Game over, eh? Yeah, take that, hosers. And that's it! We did it! We made it to Canada! Watch <laughs> ah! Christos is Regium! The Prime Minister himself comes out to greet us before he takes off, and we tour Canada as the credits roll. This is a really great game with tremendous replay value, even though mere mortals aren't meant to see the end of it. And that's it for the samplers! Stay tuned for the Halloween episode- oh wait, it is Halloween! Shit! Uh, I guess that means this was the Halloween episode. Lots of tricks this year. No, no, we'll still have something. Time for plan B. Actually, we're past plan B. This is technically plan D now. Uh, happy Halloween. I'll figure this out. <laughs> ah! A lot of people have been asking me about the Bite Jacker game and they're like, well, hey, what's it like to be immortalized in a video game? And I just tell them one thing. It's pretty awesome. <laughs>